How can we make the world better? By making ourselves better. The Dr. Joe Show explores how you can make positive personal change by using his groundbreaking and highly effective I Am approach to understand who we are and why we do what we do. Your small changes can have big effects. Join us now for the Dr. Joe Show with Mark Stiles of Stiles Law, Thomas McCoy, and your host, Dr. Joe Schrand. Welcome to the Dr. Joe Show. <laughs> Massive applause. Massive applause. Clap, 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 clap. Golf clap. It was great. Yeah, yeah. Have you been, like, practicing again? I mean, what's going on with your, your volume, your vocal tones? What's happening there, Mark? Repetition, you know? Mm. Just keep doing it over and over again and... It's a little bit better every time, I guess. But it does, I think you're, you know, flattering me. No, <laughs> I would never do that. I mean, really, I would never do that. You know, <laughs> yes. don't need to. You know, but it's it it's amazing. We've done how many two hundred plus shows, and each time two hundred plus plus. I wanted to ask you a little bit about uh, your hat there. My hat. Shoreline Aviation. Oh, you, Shoreline. Amazing you know, Before we get to our guests tonight, tell, tell, tell me what something big happened. Let me hear about it. Something big. So Shoreline Aviation is a wonderful organization here in town who runs the Marshfield Airport. And two years ago on our way back from church and breakfast, Timmy said, you know what? I'd like to go check out the airport. I said, all right. You know, I've been by there a couple times, a couple of networking events, this, that, and the other thing. I've been there. How old was Timmy when he, 14. When he, when he, he was 14 when he said that? Yeah. Wow. So we went over there and uh, we had a little tour of the place and we're in their Learjet and walking around and, and somebody captured his ear and said, you know, you can take flight instruction and get your pilot's license here. So he was hooked right away and, you know, we started to baby step through it uh, for the first six months, a couple lessons here, a couple lessons there, and very quickly he got the bug and you know circled the date of his 16th birthday, which was this past week, and um, here in the United States, at 16 years old, if you've done a certain amount of hours, written tests, uh, physicals with the FAA, you can get into an airplane by yourself and fly solo at 16 and he did it and it was really cool and I think what was really special about it was more than the obvious of seeing you know your son flying a plane it was it was seeing him follow through with a goal you know circling that date two years ago as a 14 year old and and there was a lot that needed to be accomplished in order to do it and and you know spreading out the time and setting the setting the uh the goal to do that and accomplishing it was it made me very proud so thank you shoreline aviation for making that available to us it's great i mean and and the fact that he was able to plan it prefrontal cortex thinking ahead what do i need to do to execute this plan and then what will happen next yeah and it took a lot i mean there is you know we were in favor of it and we were all for it but we weren't pushing it Mm -hmm. you know he pushed it which and, is great. And I, I don't know if you know why this has such meaning to me, because my son Jason yeah. did the exact same thing. 14 years old, he said, you know, I want to be able to do this. Same thing, planning ahead. Cool. So it is amazing. Have you been up there? I have not yet. Oh. Yeah. That's a whole other experience. Yeah. Well, he now he'll be flying solo for like another year, and then he can take passengers at 17 again. Right. Before he could take passengers in a car. Right. He can he can fly a plane alone, That's and he can't drive a car alone. Yet. Yeah, I know. It's, 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 and and he can um, he can actually fly you down to uh, the airport in Provincetown for the Pan Mass. No, just whenever you want to go there. It's it's like a half hour yeah. flight from here down to yeah. the Cape instead of dealing with traffic. Oh, but yeah. but that's up in the air. We got some stuff <laughs> happening on yes, the ground yes, this we do. weekend on the ground without. Could you introduce our guest for tonight? Yes, Dr. Joe. I am grateful to have two amazing human beings here uh, with us in studio tonight who are raising funds to eliminate cancer once and for all. Uh, We have Jim O'Leary, who is here for the eighth year uh, doing his pan mass, doing the best to continue to make every 
mile matter and uh, and eliminate cancer, hoping to create uh, create the reality that cancer is somewhat like the common cold. So uh, he's very dedicated and uh, is a wonderful team member and a wonderful uh, riding partner for us. And we have, uh, who was here a couple of years ago, we were uh, doing a very similar episode talking about and raising awareness around Dana-Farber and Pan Mass Challenges, is, is a gentleman who I can credit for the reason why I actually ride uh, for the Pan Mass Challenge. A lot, of que- a lot of times people say, why I ride? Why do you ride? Uh, and this person next to me is, is the reason. Um, he's had the doctors come to him and tell him, to get his affairs in order because cancer has uh, gotten to a place where there is no return. And here he sits next to us many years after that uh, fateful conversation with the doctors um, and continues to ride as um, someone who has been touched very deeply by cancer and um, the wonderful works of the folks up at Dana Farber, uh, the none other than uh, Superman, as the Wall Street <laughs> Journal referenced him in an article about his uh, recovery and and the, the treatments that he had, and a local hero, Rich Murphy. Oh, thank you. Wow. <laughs> thank you, Mark. Uh, Welcome, Rich. Yeah, uh, that's a tough one too. <laughs> we'll dig in. We'll, we'll dial. We'll, 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 we'll pedal through. I'm just curious, what's that like to, to hear him? What's that it's, journey been like for you? Uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm already tearing up, Dr. Yeah. Joe, so it's a it. little early. But um, no, I, uh, ah, I don't even know what to say. But uh, thank you, Mark. Um, no, uh, uh, it's been a crazy journey. And I, and I use that phrase all the time, Dr. Joe. And, uh, you know, I was dealt a certain hand, and I'm trying to make the best of it. And... Uh, Mark and I went on our last training ride tonight, and uh, a nice slow pace. And you know, we unpacked a lot of stuff today, and uh, maybe we'll unpack some more stuff here tonight. I'm not sure. Oh, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Yeah, I am. Right. And Jim, uh, this is your eighth year doing this. Yeah, this is my eighth year. Um, I did it first in 2001. And at that point in time, I think it was just more of a challenge, a physical challenge. But uh, I got hooked. It was it was pretty pretty um, uh, you moving the the whole event. Like you know, there's uh, a lot of crowd participation and a lot of people cheering you on. It's very it's very uh, emotional. Hmm. So. so was that what hooked you? Yeah, um, you know, for years I, I always uh, promised myself I'd do it again. But um, when I moved uh, down from the city back down to Marshfield. Um, I, I decided I was going to take it up again, and then I, I, ever since I did it, um, it, it was like a 16-year break, mm-hmm. and, it, and it, it was funny because I was thinking to myself, I was like, "Geez, I did this when I was very young. I think it was more brawn than brains back then, mm-hmm. but now I think I've become a, like a smarter rider. But uh, I think well, once I started doing it again, I was, I was like, I'm just going to keep on doing this as long as I can. And people are very grateful for all of you doing this, uh, and Mark. I don't think people really necessarily know what the Pan Mass is. It's a it's a it's forty eight hours of unbelievable gratitude. It's an amazing weekend, uh, often referred to as the greatest weekend of the year. Um, it's a it's a ride. Uh, it's a grueling ride. Uh, some years are are more challenging than others. Uh, last year <laughs> was oppressively hot. Um, this year, I'm hoping it's like this week. This has been one of the more beautiful weeks of the year, in my opinion, um, hoping that it stays this way through the weekend. Um, but the ride, not a race, um, the ride begins in Sturbridge, Massachusetts, uh, Saturday morning at sunrise. Uh, that We head out there tomorrow and stay overnight and all of the opening ceremonies and all of the fun fundraising conversations and all of the new uh, advancements are, are announced at this opening ceremonies, which could be seen on the local television also. Uh, and we leave at sunrise and we ride through the glory all the way to Mass Maritime Academy in Bourne, mm. which is 109 miles. Um, and then we stay there and then we get up Sunday morning and take a beautiful ride along the Cape Cod Canal and 
and through the rail trails and the beautiful towns of Cape Cod all the way to Provincetown, which is why I thought it was interesting that you had pointed <laughs> out Provincetown. And um, and we end with uh, with accolades and hugs and and it, it's really wonderful. The whole journey through it really is amazing because of the participation and the volunteers and the gratitude is really it's it 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 is all around. Um, thank you for riding. Thank you for volunteering. Thank you for coming. Thank you, officer, for stopping the traffic. And then, of course, there's the signs. Thank you for riding because I'm 14 years old because of you, you know, and all of the that uh, really emotional stuff that Jim was talking about. You know, we wear sunglasses out there uh, for multiple reasons, the sun being one, but the emotion <laughs> yeah. is, is it's overwhelming. It is. I, I really want to talk more about that, the gratitude component, but I mean, I know it's not a race, but I call it the race against cancer. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. I like it too. Because really... It's, um, I don't think there's a single family that hasn't been influenced in some way. But we were talking about gratitude. Uh, but while we were off air, we were also talking about the preparation and some anxiety that you guys are experiencing now. Chris, yeah. Want to, want to talk about that? Yeah, it's been a tough week. Um, um, yeah, and I was walking out, walking out of the house to go for the ride tonight with Mark, and my wife just kind of picked up on something. She's like, what's up? I said, no, nah, I'm just, you know, really anxious over, you know, just a lot of things. And I said, it was a tough week. Um, I happen to have scans this week. So, you know, mm. that in and of itself is always a trying time. And uh, they came back fine. But um, that came, you know, that caused, that causes some anxiety no matter what. Sure. And, um, and then there were some other um, coincidences this week. Um, I had, out of the blue, I got a phone call from a woman <clears throat> in uh, California that um, uh, tracked me down online, and her mother was dealing with mucosal melanoma, and she called me looking for um, hope. And so we've mm -hmm. been chatting, we've been texting, and then uh, in conjunction with that, I get a, uh, I receive a direct mail, a direct message uh, via Facebook from this woman. Um, She's also out of the, you know, uh, I think she's in the Midwest, and uh, she asked me to join this Facebook group, and uh, I said, why? And she goes, oh, there's a lot of chatter about you on this Facebook group. And so uh, she gave me the link. It's uh, Mucosal Melanoma <coughs> Warriors. And so uh, I joined that group. It took me a, a little while to join that. And um, I don't know, it just, it was back in the, my face and so uh, a lot of these things have caused some anxiety this week mm -hmm. and um, but you know anxiety you know I can't really put you know a anxious but also um, you know happy to help you know this woman from California um, you know I jumped on a couple phone calls with her and then on this uh, Facebook group uh, I posted back and forth and um, you know engaged with a bunch of people trying to you know, the underlying word is always hope mm. um, because, hey, I've been there. Um, you know, there are times when, you know, you, you don't have hope. And uh, So what are the tears for now, Rich? Uh, um, oh, Jesus, Dr. Joe. You're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. That's the whole point is we are not uh, What are the yeah. tears? You know, I'm not. Uh, at all. This I is don't, very no, much not, about you know, life. This is about it's, life, uh, Rich. Look at I'm I'm lucky I'm happy I've got uh, great support family friends um, um I don't know I can't really put a finger on it so uh, maybe you can help me out here we can do a session right we can do a therapy session right here well I mean it, it's it's compelling to do that because you are representing so many people who have either gone through the struggle in the midst of the struggle or those people who have lost to the struggle. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, uh, Mark and I talked about it today. You know, it's a weird thing where, um, um, look, I, I'm one of the lucky guys. I always think because I've been through it, it's, you know, relatively easy and everybody else can get out on the other side unscathed, so to speak. Uh, but that's not the case. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, what was the term you used today? Uh, survivor guilt. Survivor guilt. There, mm. there's, mm. It's, a, it's a strange, it's a strange thing. Um, but uh, 
you know. So how do you transform that guilt into the passion that you have and the help that you're giving to so many? I, th I think I just, you know, keep myself open um, and I make myself available and tell everybody what has happened. Um, and, you know, I, I always, you know, I, I, I always talk about, look, at the medicine is the medicine and it will or won't work for whatever your body is laid out to be. Um, you know, I'm they classify me as, I guess, a super responder. Um, but that is important. But what happens above your shoulders is even more important. Uh -huh. It's, you know, staying, you know, staying positive, staying busy. Um, I remember talking to this gentleman, Rich from Quincy, who didn't make it. And I remember this was eight, ten years ago. And I knew exactly he called me out of the blue, um, you know, uh, pretty easily to find online. And I said, I, I know what you're dealing with. I said, you're sitting in your house, you're looking at your window, and you're scared to, you know, make that step outside. And I said, but you got to get out there. You've got to engage, and you, know, you have to, you have to meet it head on, you know. And um, but you know that that's that's a part of it. I mean, you have to have the right support system. Uh, you know, family, my wife. I mean, oh, Lori Murphy, <laughs> uh, a saint, and. Uh, you know, it's got me through this. Mm -hmm. um, and the family, my, you know, family, friends, and, uh, and I never really talk about this, it's always in my head, you know, uh, I believe, you know, in something beyond this world, but um, the biggest thing I believe in is our angels, and they're all over the place, mm -hmm. you know. And there's gratitude again. Mm. You know? Jim, how, how does this resonate with you? <clears throat> Well, you know, uh, we d we did lose a, a friend and fellow rider this year. It was kind of a, a tough one. Uh, Hugh Hamill, uh, uh, well well known and liked person around town. But I, I think it's it's just um, you know uh, I think everyone can identify with this because it, this this touches all people, all families, and everyone knows someone who uh, who's gone through some, gone through the um, the struggle, and you know uh, some of them haven't. Uh, been able to you know win the fight so um it's just something it's it's just a a worthwhile cause that i think everyone can get behind and and, and really um you know unite ar around a, a a common purpose um i think the uh we were talking about preparation and tension like this week the tension just builds and builds and builds and uh and the funny thing is we've done it so many times we know we're going to do it we know we're going to do it well but i think the the time when you're not tense this week is you're probably you know not going to perform very well i think you have to be, have that fight or flight feeling you know coming into this week but it's going to be once you get out there and start riding and start participating it's the funnest time you'll ever have mm -hmm. But but it is not a race. So what do you think the tension is about? That whether you're just going to be able to get the 109 miles, or is there something more than that? It, it's hard to put a finger on it, isn't yes. it? It's funny because we're all like, so we ride with a group of five, like this this crew of us, and we're all kind of bickering right now. I think, and <laughs> I think we're all <laughs> it's been not that we're sick of each other, but I think we're all like, you know, I don't know, we're kind of on each other's nerves. Right, John Camesso. <laughs> it, it's 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 hilarious to say this because because um, there have been times the last couple of years when everyone's like you know uh, on the same page and everyone's very happy and stuff. And there's times where people are, like less engaged and more engaged, and you know and then there's times when people are uh, annoyed with each other. But <laughs> towards the end, we all come back together. It is, yeah. We're yeah. it's it's a family dynamic. Yeah, right. It's 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 really interesting. Uh, Mark, what's your take on on this? Pickering component. I wasn't aware of it. Everyone's usually mad at him. That's yeah. Funny. But it's you, you've spoken about this with me uh, offline as well. That how powerful this is for you. So that it's the gratitude, and then uh, you, you told me you felt guilty about that too. What, what's that about? Yeah. Well, you know. Well, I've talked about that with with respect to all charitable endeavors, right? Mm -hmm. So you you feel selfish because it feels so good mm -hmm. to be you know participating in these these types of events um it's it's really that common purpose you never really um 
very rarely in life are you surrounded by uh, a, a large number of people rowing in the exact same direction. Like there is not one person involved in this event that is going in a different direction. I, I just want to clarify one thing, but this is a bicycle race, right? Not, you're not rowing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It's a ride. It's a ride, got it. We're it's only a race, we're right, racing right, right. against cancer, right, right. right? But we are but riding at our own pace yeah. depending on how well we trained. And I mm -hmm. think that's part of the anxiety for some uh, this year is, you know, did I prepare enough? I oh. know I didn't, mm -hmm. but I'm okay with it mm -hmm. because uh, it was a choice I made not to, not to overtrain this year, and um, I will pay for it, mm -hmm. and I know that. Um, so, so do you ride as a like as a group, as a cluster, and help each other? Great out question. With the wind mm -hmm. and something, or do people go off and you wait for it? How, how does it work? Kind of all of the above, you know. Um, yeah, we always, you know, usually, you know, um, it's it's a bunch of twenty five mile rides. So every twenty five miles, we get to stop, eat, hang out. So uh, we always get to reset. Um, some day, you know, sometimes you're feeling better in those, you know, on those legs and you go a little faster and you just wait. But um, what's the coolest, the, one of the best part is at the very end, you know, we all wait. We all mm -hmm. go across that finish line together. Oh, that's and, lovely. Uh, it's, that's something, you know, it's something else. Um, you yeah, know, but you end up riding with <clears throat> random people yeah. that you've never met, right? Conversations. Uh, every, every friend started out as a stranger. That's right. And none of these folks are strangers because, again, it's that common mission and purpose. Everybody is supporting one another. Everybody is encouraging. Everybody is really optimistic and positive, you know. And, it's it, again, it's this, this moment in time where it, it's so special that, you know, you do. You feel like, wow, I'm really blessed to be here, mm -hmm. surrounded by all of these, these various people who are all pushing in the same mm -hmm. direction. So you end up riding five miles with somebody and you just, mm -hmm. you're talking with them and catching up and then poof, they're gone, yeah. you know, and it's, uh, and it's fun. And sometimes you catch on to one of those trains, a, a Peloton technically term, not the, not the stationary bike that everybody has, uh, post COVID. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the actual peloton of ride, and you you jump in, and it's like you know we're mm -hmm. typically riding at a you know sixteen seventeen miles an hour, and all of a sudden you're in this train going twenty two miles an hour, and you're like, wow, I picked up a lot of time, and it's really a, a matter of mm -hmm. physics, and it's mm -hmm. <laughs> somewhat frightening the first yeah. couple of times you jump into those trains, but you're in these with these you know hardcore riders, and then you pop out, and maybe you see them at lunch or something like that, but. Chances are they're finishing well before I am. Um, I am, mm -hmm. and uh, you know. And then there's the people on the side, and it's it's, it's really. Mm -hmm. it, I encourage everybody to give it a go. And you mm -hmm. know, we've joked uh, on this show quite a bit. You know, I'm not a cyclist. You know, I'm not really into it. I I don't really like it that much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fundraiser who happens to ride a bike. Right. You know, and you know anybody who's uh, able to ride a bike, it's it's really worth giving it a go. Mm -hmm. It really is. Yeah, it, 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 it's something else. I mean, as you said, this cohesive group of people, riders, volunteers, um, uh, staff from the hospitals. Yeah. Um, and the conversations you have uh, and, you know, on the bike, off the bike. And, and the funniest place I always remember is uh, in Brewster. They have these um, ice seats where you get to, you know, sit on a block of ice to work on your backside. Sounds cool. And, and uh, <laughs> ha, ha, ha. And, um, <laughs> you know, I always remember it's kind of one of those places where you just pick up this conversation with the person on mm -hmm. the cube next door. And, um mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. Every friend was once a stranger. Not not just the cause, you know, like why are you doing it to, to fight cancer, to to get funds so that we can do the research, so that we can look into what is this condition about, but it's about the experience. So off air we were talking a little bit about the difference between happiness and pleasure. Um, and what I'm hearing from Mark is that it gives him no pleasure, really, to be <laughs> to be riding. Purpose, though. And yet it gives a purpose and happiness. Yes. So you, have you considered that distinction here? 
just when you mentioned it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess there's there isn't much pleasure, but there is a lot of happiness. It right. really is. It's uh, as I said, all the you know we've talked about the anxiety. The anxiety will disappear once we jump on that bike, once we see each other, once we start it, and you hear that first person at five in the morning cheering your name and just saying, "Hey, thank you." Um, the light switch goes off, right? Mm. And it, yeah, all this yuckiness that I'm feeling right now will disappear. And so the happiness and the gratitude, these go together because this is about something external influencing you. Whereas pleasure, drugs and alcohol, things like that are all internal, right? It releases dopamine and you get this internal experience that doesn't last. But this sounds like it's last. I mean, I've spoken with Mark about this for years now, and each year it seems there's more and more contentment in doing this. Mm. Am I missing something here? Or? No, no. It's hard to think about not doing it. You know, mm -hmm. next year will be no, yeah, year number 10, which, you know, is a stepping stone. Um, well, you know, one thing I'd say is, like we were saying, there's no pleasure. But if we think about it, we talk about this all the time. Some of the scenery that we go yeah. by is just, it's just yeah. incredible. Yeah. You know, going through farmlands out in, uh, you know, Western Mass and then going, like, you know, down the canal and, you know, the dunes in, in the Cape. It's just, uh, I mean, it, it's pretty pretty moving in general. Just like uh, you, you could drive down these same roads and you're not going to get the same experience. You're not going to get the same point of view. Um, it, it's just, uh, it's really like you know uh one of the one of the benefits of doing this in, yeah. in my opinion okay and, and that absolutely is pleasure and the, and the, the training rides are pleasurable yeah aren't they? and and what i was going to say is i mean the, the pan mass ride i mean i am enjoying riding because yeah. i mean we're riding with six thousand people i'm meeting a bunch of different people i enjoy the rides with the you know the crew that we train with I don't necessarily enjoy training, and it's like practice, you know. Alan Iverson, practice, you know. Um, How about corn muffins at Shipwreck? That's pretty yeah, pleasure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I gave yeah. them a five-star review. This <laughs> corn muffins at Shipwreck. Okay, we'll have to get into that at some point. Um, you know, but I, I won't ride by myself. Like, I won't do it. I try to. I want to, and I have every intention to, and then I find another reason not to. So when it comes to that, so there, it's more of a community-based enjoyment and pleasure for me, yeah, uh, as opposed to like a passion mm -hmm. for cycling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not looking at that bike and go, oh, I gotta get on. Yeah, I can't <laughs> wait. I can't wait to go hammer those hills. It, it does have kind of a uh, similarity when you you're on the golf course and you're talking at the tees and stuff, but you're just doing the same thing except you're going 15 miles an hour down the road mm. and making sure yeah. you don't get hit by cars. Yeah. Huh. So you're just like shooting the breeze about just random things all the time. Yeah. It's, right. it's pretty fun. So how do people join up and how do people contribute? Commit and then figure it out. Okay. That's one of the slogans. Commit, then figure it out. Uh, PMC.org. Is a, is, has a wealth of information. Um, it's how you donate, actually. So you could go on pmc.org and search James O'Leary if you wanted to uh, donate to his, or Richard Murphy uh, if you wanted to donate to his. Uh, you can use your name, name too, Mark. Mark Styles. There we go. <laughs> Just Mark th throw that Styles. In there. Mark Styles. Or, yeah. a, or a team name, right? Yeah. Or Marshall Rams cancer. Yeah, we Marshall we've Rams benefited. Um, so I did want to talk about this a little bit. So we we've all been on a on a Marshfield Rams cancer team, which is wonderful. Uh, a lot of you know like minded individuals riding together. Um, but we've also had the benefit of uh, directing our funds to South Shore Health Systems. Oh, yeah. hmm. So a few of us uh, over the last five years or so have been directing our funds there. So it's almost as though we're on two teams. We're on the Marshfield team and the South Shore health systems teams, but it's really nice to, and I know I want Rich to talk about this a little bit, is to uh, to keep it local, right, to, 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 to furnish those funds and push those funds to our, our local citizens who are going to be utilizing the services that are here in our backyard. Which is perfectly reasonable because we've got how many riders? 6,000, did you say? Yeah. yeah. And, and I hope that each of them are, are working for their community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, yes. it's all Dana-Farber, but, you know, so um, a couple of years ago, Mark brought me to this event, and, uh, a social health systems event, and they were talking about uh, earmarking funds towards social health. And um, I felt um, 
you know, I wanted to talk to somebody because I felt, hey, Dana Farber saved my life. I have a obligation in the most positive aspect to, you know, give back to Dana Farber. And, um, but, you know, after talking with these people from Social Health, um, you know, they were talking about grassroots, local funds, you know, so the person down the street where from where I live, you know, helping that man or that woman or that child um, navigate through whatever part of the system. And I experienced it this week. I mean, going into Boston is a hassle. My doctor, Dr. Hody, does not let me get scanned locally at Weymouth. He will only let me go into Boston. And, and just the anxiety, we keep talking about that, the anxiety, the stress of going into town. Um, and we didn't have that option until Weymouth. And it's an option. It's a great option. And that being able to take that equation about that, you know, that person or the caregiver driving in that sick person into Boston um, and not having to do that and having now you can do it in Weymouth is such a, a, a huge burden off these people's shoulders. Wow. And, and that was a huge part of it. And so, yeah, we... Um, I think all of us here mm -hmm. at this table and, yep. and a lot in our team, you know, earmark our funds um, to social health systems, mm -hmm. and um, we're we're very excited about this. This is mm -hmm. our second year, first, second. Maybe year? for you, I've been doing it for four or five now. Okay, yeah. but 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 it's important because we need to have care that is accessible to everyone, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which means if. If somebody has to go all the way into Boston, they may not access right. the care. Absolutely. You're right. It, you know, people will tap out because something is inconvenient, even if it's, you know, going to save your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Fascinating. So people can just go to pmc.org. And yeah. it's .org because it's a nonprofit. Right. right? Mm -hmm. And then they can either. Yeah, when you donate, <clears throat> when you donate to Jim or Rich's Ride, it's. You lives. know that one, one hundred percent of those dollars is going to research for Dana Farber to help mm -hmm. find these new advanced uh, concepts and ideas that helped people like Rich Murphy mm -hmm. be living proof. So that's what they call it when you're on in Pan Mass. If you're, if mm -hmm. you've experienced cancer and dealt with it, and then you... Rich is just showing me his T-shirt. From 2018. PMC, I get, uh, living, living Proof. proof. Uh, I, will, living proof. As I, will get, I will have my ninth t Living Proof T-shirt this weekend. Mm -hmm. And it's a badge of honor. They have a nice ceremony at Mass Maritime, so it's the halfway point that evening. They do a big ceremony for all those that are riding, that are living proof that mm -hmm. their money is being utilized, and it's working. Yeah, it's it, working, people. Listen, it is absolutely working, and their advancements are are moving really rapidly, and it's it's exciting to be a part of that because mm -hmm. it is going to be eliminated. So, do we do we know what the uh, the annual funds raised? I, I can't remember. The They're shooting for seventy million this year. Yeah, yeah I was in. So I was in on Monday, and I, I to go to my scans. I have to walk over the PMC bridge uh, over to that side of the hospital, and um, they've got the check from last year was sixty nine million. Hmm. Uh, they raised last year, so uh, they've always gone north of the previous year. And that's the most money raised in, in the single, single event, or a single event. Single, single fundraising event in the nation. So, Mark, mm. you were talking about all the um, rider raised dollars going to research. I yeah. think that's a, that's a good opportunity to plug all the people that, you know, volunteer and support the, the weekend, which yeah. is, th these people do a lot of work, and, you know, they're, they, I mean, we wouldn't be, uh, you, you know, we've tried long rides where we just want, uh, like you know, kind of winged it and went to Seven Eleven when we were hungry, and this is not really that great. <laughs> not you know, a pretty the, the, sight the support, of guys the support walking is in there incredible. Spandex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At that point in time, I don't know, I'm thirsty and hungry. I don't care what people think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but the, the the volunteers, it is amazing, and it's and it's a it's a really great opportunity to be part of this weekend too. To to volunteer at one of the water stations or at the lunch station or. Or one of the uh, other, you know, um, you know, mass maritime or the opening ceremony one, where you are there and you are really appreciated. Because I mean, we roll in, 
and there's sandwiches and there's wow. drinks and there's fruit and there's and there's every I mean you do not think at all about sustenance while you're out there you know that you're going to be completely taken care of and they're all smiling and mm-hmm. it's it's a wonderful experience of watching I, I know volunteers who have who have experienced it and they come back year after year too because of that same gratitude it's yeah. it's it's addictive there that, that part is and that that is that pleasurable part the i am is saying you know we're always doing the best we can if we don't like it we can change it how can cancer be the best your body can do but it is an i am it's not about a moral thing or it's the way the body is at that moment in time and you go in you get chemotherapy or radiation or something and that small change in the biological domain can have a huge effect I mean, Rich, it's saved a life. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Um, so with the I am, it's saying there are four domains. Your home domain, the social domain, which is the rest of the world. These two domains are outside. And the two internal domains, the biological domain of your brain and body, we're talking about that. And the I see domain, the way you see yourself, the way you think other people see you. We've spoken a lot about that. When you experience that gratitude from somebody else, it elevates your own sense of self and how you feel and that you're giving back. But because these four domains interact, a small change can have a big effect. You don't need to change everything. Small changes can have big effects. So I'm going to ask both of you, Jim, I'm going to start with you. Given what we're talking about tonight, Mm -hmm. what small change can you recommend to our listeners? Um, Well, I I would think that in, in, I find myself doing this more and more lately is that uh, at times sometimes you may be frustrated with other people and you try to uh, try to imagine what their perspective is and mm-hmm. what they're going through because it might be uh, something that you know that's um, understandable the way they're behaving you know I mean in, in it, it's it's kind of puts things in perspective uh, I, I try to like imagine putting myself uh, walking a mile in other uh, other people's shoes sometimes yeah. yeah, well, that and that's absolutely what the I am is about. It's right on the money that, you know, everybody has their I am. They're influenced by their world, rather than judge them. Mm-hmm. Let's look again at why they do what they do based on the influence of the domains. And mm-hmm. the words "look again," you reverse them again. Look again to repeat something. Look like a spectator. Let's respect why people do what they do without judging them. When's the last time you got angry at someone treating you with respect? Mm-hmm. So that's absolutely. Great. So, folks, listen up to that one. You know, step back for a moment and just wonder why is the person doing what they're doing mm-hmm. without judging them. Rich, small changes have big effects. What do you recommend to our listeners? Um, so, so I, I had this conversation with this woman from California this week, and and my wife and I had this conversation 15 years ago. Um, and I think this is, you know, really to somebody who's going through it. And I, I hope this answers the question. But um, so I, I, I stopped reading the internet about my disease early on. In fact, after the first week, I wouldn't, I wouldn't read it. I wouldn't Google melanoma. I wouldn't. I stopped it. And in fact, my wife and I got in a huge fight over it because she was googling it. And uh, I told her we we're going to. At that point, 15 years ago, I said I'm going to. I'm going to cancel Comcast. I said because there's you're you're not getting the information that you need to get. And um, I got to tell you, I, I I haven't Googled my disease in over 14 years. I don't read about it. That's not to say I have blind faith in my doctors. I challenge my doctors all the time. I think I'm getting off your your no, question. No, 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 not at all. But wh- why did you make that choice? Because because there was nothing good to read. Uh. So it was demoralizing. It was, and it is. And it took away hope. It took away hope, mm-hmm. absolutely. Um, so that's a very important small change that people can make. It's hard. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've been, you know, the devices are, you know, right. on you, on your body 24-7. Uh, you're in front of your computer. Everybody works remotely. Um, the Internet is how we get our information. But early on, I could see that... Um, um, if I kept reading this information, if my wife kept reading this information, um, we would have a hard, uh, we would have had a very hard fi- time finding hope. Mm-hmm. Um, and it certainly wasn't in that black box. Yeah, and it's not the same as denial. No, I don't believe so at all. Right, not at all. It's saying, I'm going to choose how I'm influenced. Yeah, 
Uh, and once again, I mean, it's not it's it's hard to find information, uh, you know, that you trust. And um, but what we found, it was just everything was. Um, well, I'll tell you. I mean, everything we read. Uh, my wife would come down in the morning, and and she'd have this look on her, and she. I said, what did you look? And I'd go through her history, and you'd see it. And I'm like, oh, the average melanoma survivor is, you know, a year or whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, excuse me, F that. I'm not going to – I'm not tapping out in a year. So your your experience gives people hope. And I hope so. And that's why people contact you. I hope so. And we'll get to that second part as well. Mark, what about you? What small change can you recommend to our listeners? I, I would <clears> – <throat> I think this is the first time you've ever asked me this, by the way, of all the 250 shows we've done. Mm-hmm. Um, That's a small change. I would encourage people to challenge their comfort zone and, and push outside their comfort zone as, as often as possible. And if it's getting on a bike or it's singing karaoke, it's, you know, open the, open the comfort zone and enlarge it, and you might really – you might find some really cool opportunities, such as Pan Mass Challenge. Mm-hmm. Get comfortable doing something. You'll get comfortable doing the uncomfortable eventually, right? Mm-hmm. Or else. Yeah. Or else. Well, <laughs> you know, there's, there's a lot to that because the unfamiliar can create enormous anxiety. Mm-hmm. And then push through. You push through, and it's familiar. The second truth of the I am. Everyone's got one. Everyone is interested in what you think or feel about them through their IC domain, how you see them, which has an effect on their biological domain because, you know, it feels different when you feel respected or disrespected. You're part of someone's home or social domain. So this means you control no one, but you influence everyone. You get to choose the kind of influence you want to be. Mark Stiles, I'm going to start with you. What kind of influence do you want to be? Um. I would like to inspire people to do things that they wouldn't otherwise do to be more charitable. Uh, we've talked about this a lot on the show about, um, you know, charity is meant to be at home. You're supposed to be private. And I've been fighting that um, really, really hard because I believe it's a contagion. And if people see other people doing good things that they're going to be inspired to do good things so you know i'm going to remove the head trash that i've heard so many times about that and continue to inspire people to do charitable things because of what it does but also what it does for them the good feeling that they get by doing good and um and it would mushroom into something that would make this world a wonderful place. I completely agree. It's also I am, you know. Yeah. Every time you remind someone of their value, you increase your own value. Right. Why not? Jim O'Leary, same question. You control no one, you influence everyone. What kind of influence do you want to be? Well, um, I, I think I probably want to uh, encourage people to, to, you know, try to reach their potential, you know, whether it be in in any area i think specifically uh you know in uh, my uh, my work uh, life um, i'm constantly trying to coach people up and stuff like that but i think that that's applicable uh in all over the place it's not just like kind of a, a work environment thing but uh trying to uh you know um get people to uh reach their potential as much as possible hmm. so an encourager mm-hmm. motivator sounds very familiar mm. Not a bad thing at all. Nope. And it helps other people as yeah. well to to push their limits. Rich Murphy, Superman. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I do not like that moniker. <laughs> you control no one. You influence everyone. You get to choose the kind of influence you want to be. Rich Murphy, survivor, inspirator. What do you want to be? What do I want to be? What kind of influence do you want? I would like to be an influencer of hope. I mean, the, you know, that, that, that thread keeps on coming through. Um, and it just doesn't have to be hope f- for, you know, the sick. Um, you know, hope for somebody trying to start a new business. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, I mean, hope is a, hope, hope was a word I absolutely ignored up until 15 years ago. And um, and I, I don't know when it became so important to me, but it has. 
um, oh my god any song that has the word and I'm probably if I go to you two songs forget it I'll be blubbering and crying in two seconds but no hope um, you know being uh, being able to you know and I don't know help me out doc like doctor is is you know what is that you know find that little sliver of hope and you know then that can bloom to so much something so much bigger um, but you know it you, you got to find that yeah. small little crack and and, and, and expand it. You got to hope. You got to believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you Great. can do that. Gentlemen, thanks so much for your contributions to so many. That's it, man. That was quick. I told you. <laughs> we'll be back next week with the Doctor Joe Show. Thanks, thanks Larry. Everybody. Thank you, thanks, Tom. Just to show, then go, 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 go.